Great. All right. And then if you wanted to get started, introduce the event and like, okay, now it's 503. All right. Good to go. Okay. Well, thanks for whoever is able to join us. We know it's a you know busy time and a time difference. So uh, anybody who's able to hop on or if you catch this replay later or something, we're so grateful for you to just um, be in this moment celebrating with us with um, a discussion about the making of a father's love. And so this is a book talk with myself, and I'm Katrina Johnson, and uh, we have Angel Trazo here as well. All right, and I'll start off by introducing Katrina. So Katrina Johnson is a mother of two, award-winning professional school counselor, certified holistic life coach, registered trainer, and the award-winning author of Penelope Embraces Her Uniqueness. She holds a bachelor's degree in speech communication, a master's degree in special education, a second master's degree in school counseling, and a principal certification. She is also skilled in social emotional learning, mindfulness, self-care, and stress management. As a school counselor and student support coordinator, she has worked with various organizations, student groups, parents, teachers, and administrators to help teach awareness about good character traits, positive social skills, and academic career, social slash emotional awareness, self-care, and stress management. She enjoys reading, journaling, genealogy research, listening to jazz music, time in nature, and spending quality time with her family and friends. She realizes that organizations, students, and their families face many challenges in today's world, and it is her daily pleasure to encourage, teach, coach, and guide them toward positive solutions and helpful resources to support their growth and needs. Thank right. you. <laughs> and then I think we're going to do my bio next, and then we'll go into questions. Sounds good. And we have um, our illustrator, Angel Trazo, here with us today. Angel is a second generation Filipina American artist and scholar from the Bay Area. She is currently a PhD candidate in cultural studies at UC Davis. She received her MA in Asian American studies from UCLA and her bachelor's in biology and studio art from Colgate University. She is the author and illustrator of the children's book, We Are Inspiring, the stories of 32 inspirational Asian American women. This was in 2019. And the illustrator of Vanessa Unmuted that came about in 2021. And most recently, and today, the release of A Father's Love, um, and we're so excited uh, to have her be a part of the project. She has been commissioned to do visual notes and illustrations for clients, including the Center for Asian American Media and PBS. Oh, thank you for the introduction. Are you ready for questions? Yes, we can get those <laughs> questions going. Let's get them going. All right. So the first question for Katrina is, what inspired you to write this book of Father's Love? That's such a great question. And I'm so sorry. Y'all may hear some barking in the background. It is Chadwick's birthday and he is two. And I think he's letting us know we have not celebrated him today. So, um, so my apologies about what's happening in the background. Um, inspiration from the book, Penelope Embraces Her Uniqueness was the first children's book that I was able to um, produce and publish. And Landon had a huge request once he saw um, the book come out and he kind of noticed it was more so about girls and he just felt there needed to be something for the boys too. So he made a big deal about it. And um, not too long after writing, uh, after Penelope came out, I uh, took some time to think about uh, just boys and needs of boys uh, in their lives and just kind of started the journaling process like I usually do. 
and I like rhyming things that rhyme. And so I just kind of messed around for some time and it sat there like it normally does. And then eventually got to the place, I put it on Word doc and just went from there to try to, you know, figure out what we were going to do with a father's love. Oh, so can you tell me more about the book? Um, yes. So a father's love, it really comes from a place that's uh, near and dear to my heart, especially um, the relationship I have with my own father. So when I think about, I know we're targeting boys, but it, it speaks to, I think, all children and that relationship, uh, specifically to fathers, it's so powerful and the influence that a father has in this case on a son's life. So it's an inspirational book and it just emphasizes uh, ways uh, that you can have healthy relationships. Um, this goes for father figures as well. And so I wanted to emphasize mentors because oftentimes they have a heavy hand in the lives of uh, children, especially males. And mm -hmm. so um, it's just a beautiful way um, the book talks about ways that you can um, make this this impact on the life of a child and build that relationship between you and that child. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I definitely was so excited to work with you on this book because of that positive messaging. Um, and so were any of the characters inspired by real people? If so, who? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Okay. So um, the the main characters that are kind of like at that front part, uh, definitely, you know, little Landon and then his father um, and, and them just having that father-son moment together. Um, oftentimes, uh, Landon and Hali, they have had moments at SeaWorld together. Mm -hmm. And so there have been just many moments in life where you know there are pictures you've taken and things you're doing and um just the sweet memories of ways to connect and and have fun with your child so I would say the main characters definitely um they're highly connected to um you know meaningful people mm. Yeah, I remember you sharing um, as we were doing the initial sketches, some pic pictures of your son. And I was like, oh, I'm so excited to draw a character based on him. So it's really <laughs> cute that all of this just came together. Um, yeah. All right. And now did you want to do a mini book reading and share a few pages from A Father's Love for us? Absolutely. We can do that. All right. So here's A Father's Love written by Katrina Johnson, illustrated by Angel Trazo. Okay, so here's some of the pages. They, you may come in, come in and out of seeing them. So a boy needs a strong father to hold his hand and show him the way. A boy needs a strong father to help him learn how to play and, and pray. And hopefully you can kind of see some of the illustrations there. A boy needs a strong father to keep him safe from hurt and harm. A boy needs a strong father so that he can learn and not alarm. And again, just some of the artwork. The amazing illustrations by Angel, blown away. A boy needs a strong father to teach him how to grow from being a boy to being a man. And so you have the son with his first day of school and then he moves on to where now it's the it's time for that job interview. Headed into young adulthood. And I'll read one more. A boy needs a strong father to help him understand God's plan. And this uh, is... There are many favorites I have from your illustrative work, Angel, but this one is like one of my favorites. And I think it's because I love nature 
And um, also there's just a variety of ways uh, we can see spiritual care happening and people exercising their faith. So I love when um, we're able to see diversity. Um, it's so important as we know in our world today, especially. So um, thank you so much for the beautiful work and this book would not have uh, been possible uh, without you being a part of it. So I'm glad you said yes. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Katrina. <laughs> Absolutely. I know. I'm really glad you found me on YouTube of all places. That was really I, hilarious. <laughs> well, I had given up on all the top illustrators. They weren't having it. There were top illustrators and they were too busy or, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. didn't, you know, have time for me in that way. And I saw your work, fell in love with the, the illustrations I saw you do in your, your uh, original, your, your first, I think, um, illustrations with your book. And then I, it, it had me wondering, I was like, I'm curious, does she do this? Like, and then one thing led to the next, I was able to co connect with you. And then like, here we are. Yeah. Yeah, we still haven't met in person. So I'm really excited. Hopefully someday we can meet in person, uh, maybe do a book reading together. And I'm loving the comments in the chat. Thank you so much. I see that um, someone in your family wrote that the words and illustrations tell a great story together. So I really appreciate that feedback. Yes, they do. So thank you. All right. And so I'm going to start the screen share back up. And then we can move on to the next set of questions. Okay. Oh, my bad. Hey. Slideshow. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So, Angel, um, how did you become an illustrator? Tell us about that. Yeah, so I've wanted to be an illustrator ever since I was a little kid. So this is a picture of me in elementary school. Um, and when I was about six or seven, I remember writing in an assignment for like first or second grade. The question was, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said that I really wanted to be a children's book illustrator. And then my mom found one of these projects that I made when I was, I think, in second grade. So like in 2002, <laughs> uh, and it was a children's book called How Turtles Have Shells. And yeah, that was probably the first full children's book I ever made as a little kid. And my teacher was really cool because she would like bind them, like she would print out all the yes. text and then she'd have us color on the pages and really put them together with a little like spiral notebook. And <laughs> so then I... Um, you know, it kept drawing even when I was in high school. So these are some examples of my high school art, just like drawing in my notebooks for math class. Uh, I had the opportunity to do some paintings at a local hospital. And so those are the murals that I did when I was a high school student. And then when I went to college, I stayed doing art mostly on the side. I really thought that I was going to um, back in the day, I thought I was going to go into pediatrics. So I was like, yeah studying biology, um, which is totally not what I'm doing now. But back in college, I was studying biology, but I also had art as my double major. And so this book on the left was actually the first book I made as an adult. And it was a graphic novel um, that I made for my senior studio art thesis when I was an undergrad. And so after that, I was really inspired to keep illustrating mostly on the side. Um, since I've just been in grad school ever since college. And yeah, so I'm still illustrating. It's not a full-time job, but it's something that I'm still so passionate about. And I try to keep doing uh, when I can uh, outside of school to keep me keep me artistic and creative. And uh, it's something that I really love doing, especially telling you know diverse stories. And I do my own work, but I also love working on commission. So I was really happy when Katrina reached out with this project. So I hadn't done a child. I hadn't illustrated a children's book for um, anyone else before. So it was actually like one of my first printed commissions. I'd done like eBooks, but I hadn't done anything in print besides my own work. So it was really, really fun to do. Oh, 
That's so neat. So neat, Angel. And um, your work um, is needed. I think that that was one of the things I fell in love with when I was, you know, looking for an illustrator and um, your work speaks loud and clear and it's needed uh, in our world. So thanks for what you, for what you bring and what you do with that work. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, another question. Um, you talked about your books uh, that you've worked on. Who or what has been a major influence on your illustrating um, style? Oh, yeah. So, um, oh, and this is the ebook that I made during the pandemic. Yeah. And so these are some of my major art influences. So back when I was a kid, I was always really inspired by anime, especially like Studio Ghibli characters, like My Neighbor Totoro and Spirited Away and those kinds of films by Miyazaki were really um, pivotal in how my art style kind of developed, especially since some of the first drawing books I ever read were like how to draw manga books and stuff like that. So I guess I was really heavily inspired by um, more Asian art styles. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the illustrators that I'm super, super inspired by right now. So Genevieve Santos, who drew this like boba girl, is a Filipina American who's actually also from my hometown, San Jose, California. Um, and then Vashti Harrison's Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History was the children's book that inspired me to make my own children's book, but about Asian American women. So that was a huge turning point for me. Like seeing her book, I was just so inspired to make something about Asian American women. Right. Um, and I also really love Trinidad Escobar, who's a Filipino American comic artist. And so her style is very, um, it's more like spiritual, like tr like ancient kind of Filipina, like witchcraft spirituality, which is really interesting to me. Um, mm -hmm. And also Anusha Syed, who does ch children's books about the South Asian um, Canadian experience because I think she's actually based in Canada but her work is so fun and colorful and um, her children's book style definitely inspires me a lot too. Cute I love it thanks for sharing that with us um, as far as the illustration process so we know those of us who are not artists in this way that it takes work to produce beautiful things that can become a book so can you tell us a little bit about that process yeah of course so all of these illustrations were created on my ipad using the app called procreate and procreate is like a drawing app and i use basically just use like this ipad and i kind of draw on it like a tablet and for this project, I know we, we got the script and for each of the lines, Katrina and I would start brainstorming potential ways of turning these like more abstract words into visual concepts. And so I remember this page specifically, the, you know, the words shape and mold made me really think about, you know, clay. And so we were kind of brainstorming, like, what if the but if the father and son were making pottery and so that idea turned into a sketch and then after I do these like really rough black and white sketches then I start doing the coloring and the color is what really really brings my style to life and so that's basically the process just a lot of sketching and brainstorming collaboratively and then in the end I'll color it and you know there are some iterations and drafts in between but most of the time it's a pretty smooth uh pretty smooth process of getting our visions together and it, yeah it was really fun working on these pages together yes I agree neat 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 all okay. right is there any do you have any other illustrations you needed to add or wanted to show us oh yeah I think that's the end of the slideshow I and agree so... DeAndre saying is so fascinating um, to create, you know, images from uh, words. And I agree, that was the fun behind this work with Angel. I was blown away at just her creativity. Um, and she was able to like, just take what I um, gave her and she was able to come up with some just amazing work that we now see in this amazing 
book, A Father's Love. Um, all right, I think we have time, right, for Q and A. If there's, you know, any any questions that might be out there. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking at these comments. DeAndre, by chance, do you have any questions you may have wanted answered or you're curious about? Um, I have my first question is for Angel. Um, so, um, like I said, it's you're it, it's great that you can take someone else's words and and create an image from that what um trying to figure out how to how to phrase this what is it do you have an, an ultimate goal or 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 what's i don't want to say bucket list but that's kind of the only only worth is coming to mind is there a, a a a project that you haven't done that is like man if i could could illustrate for this that would be i don't want to say you've made it i mean because i mean you're you're doing great now but and and what what comes to mind obviously you know we're we're, we're talking about you know we're you're doing great books with meaning and and you know they're based on on lives of real people and 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 things but of course you know when you think about illustrating the first thing that comes to mind is comic books obviously that's not what we're talking about here but is there a i'm trying to <laughs> trying to find in the end of this, so i apologize but is there like a like i said a if i did this then that would be I, I kind of uh uh yes I'm I'm there kind of kind of project. Yeah, I love that question. I I mean it is kind of like a bucket list question. I can't think of it another word either. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think something that I really want to challenge myself to do is do a piece. Um, do a book that's based on a story that I've written because a lot of my past work has been I'll either illustrate for someone else's story or I'll do kind of nonfiction where it's a collection of short biographies of people or illustrations of, you know, real people's stories. So to do more of a nonfiction or to do more of a fiction story where I kind of create like a character and a world um, and a little narrative, I think that's one of my next goals. And that's something that I haven't done. I don't know why. Like I haven't, you know, created a made up character and a made up world and um, that kind of story. I've mostly been doing like nonfiction or other people's stories. Um, so I think that's definitely on my list, either to do a children's book about a character that I've created and a completely fictional story or um, even a comic book that's a totally fictional story. That would be really fun, a really fun project. Thank you for that question. Awesome. Thank you. Oops. And so for you, Katrina, I haven't had a, a, an opportunity to um to read uh Penelope uh Penelope yet. Um and I don't and don't know um how many people have. If you could give kind of a I don't say kind of a background, but again that's <laughs> <laughs> on, on Penelope and uh, uh, assuming it's the, the, the same style as a father's love where a father's love is dealing with the love between a father and son is Penelope dealing with the love between a mother and, and daughter or what's the, the the relationship dynamic there oh wow yeah. that's a great question Um, no they actually are very, you know, opposite. So Penelope is more about uh, a young girl who's very uh, hard on herself. You know, she's worried about how she's looking, whether it's her skin tone, whether it's her hair, you know, whether it's the size of her hands, her feet, I mean, on and on. She's really focused on the outward appearance. And 
she's experiencing this just throughout her life. And one day this circus comes to town and they, of course, um, have things that a circus has, the acrobats, the, you know, fun things to go do. And then there's a time where someone's playing music and she just has a ball. She's like invited to the stage and she ends up falling in love with the musical instruments and um, ends up, you know, learning, like, look at all this beautiful stuff that just happened that I'm, you know, I'm able to enjoy and I'm doing. And so her focus shifted to, you know, life's really not about our outward appearance. It's really about our gifts and talents. It's what's on the inside of us. These are the things we can share with the world. So it's, it's more so about, it's a book um, to empower kids, but adults as well to embrace your your whole self with whatever unique things that you have going on but figure out what those gifts and talents are and there's encouragement behind it to you know share that with the rest of the world that's what we're here to do figure out like what am I good at what am I great at so that book is more so about positive self-esteem and then here's a father's love and it's just, it's it's more so about relationships, like healthy relationships and the dynamics between sons and fathers or those who are like father figures in a child's life. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Do you plan on in the future um, creating um, one that talks about the love between the father and daughter? And I and I know the ah. father. I know a father's love can 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 transcend gender. But do you have do you have a plan to? Because and and the reason why I ask that, uh, when you look at the the role a, a, as a father, our 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 role is to teach a son how to love and teach a daughter how to be loved. Mm-hmm. And and those are are in the, those relationships trend they they cover every aspect of, of of our of our lives you know not with you know with a son not just to teach him how to love you know a, a, a wife that they marry but te- teach him how to love people that that they come in contact with in general every you know the those relationships that a father has, you know, how he interacts with those people, the son watches just the same as, as a daughter watches, you know, you have a situation where, you know, the, 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 where, um, the father, the mother and the daughter have all, well, the, the father is teaching the daughter how to be loved based on how he treat he treats, you know, his, his wife or his, his significant other. Mm. So, so just wondering if, if you had, had plans to, to create something, dealing with that relationship wow I mean that's such a good question DeAndre I I haven't thought about I haven't thought about it yet in that way um and the way I receive I guess inspiration it just kind of comes through um for instance in this case how the second book came along I guess I'm listening for what someone's telling me they need or, or, Hey, we want to hear more about. So I guess I do. I'm open to ideas. So what an idea you just gave me, because that's what happened with a father's love. I mean, Penelope had just come out and then Landon, I think loved all the buzz, you know, he loved, he loved the buzz (laughs) that was happening for Penelope And I think he noticed it was really like girl centered, it seemed like. And he just really expressed like, what about a book for, you know, and this kind of came to be. So what a question. Um, That's something for me to think about, you know, and Mm -hmm. to spend some time um, maybe seeing what what may come from that. But I hadn't Mm -hmm. thought about it. So, yeah, thanks for the idea. I mean, looking at you know your your relationship with your father. I mean, you know mm-hmm. that's <laughs> you know kind of inspiration there. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, another um, cousin, Arnisi has joined. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll let her ask some questions now. <laughs> do you, oh, do you? We're at the Q and A. We kind of covered the work, and now we're on Q and A. So, oh, I'm sorry. I think I was muted, huh? Oh, <laughs> you were. Okay. Yes, I was walking the dog, and I was looking at my phone, and I saw that, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" So as soon as I got home, I uh, turned on my laptop and connected. <laughs> Uh, well, yes. thanks for joining us. Oh. Well, congratulations on your book. And I will be purchasing one. Um, is it on Amazon? Will it be on Amazon? It is. You can find it Amazon, major bookstores, Barnes & Noble, I think should have it oh, online. Okay. I think Walmart, sometimes I've, I've noticed different things in the, there in Target. Okay, so, wonderful. Yeah. So you can you can find it out there. Okay. Thank you. So I appreciate nice. the, we appreciate the support so much. <laughs> I will let Sonia know also. She uh, works. You. She volunteers in a library once a week. So I'll oh. let her know. See if we can get it in the library. Oh, how fun! Yes, that'll be so okay. neat. Okay. Well, we're kind of <laughs> down to the end of our time together and so um we covered you know just questions about inspiration behind the book and um also the people who inspire illustrators who've inspired angel and the work that she does mm -hmm. um, as an illustrator and uh how this came to be you know the making of um a father's you know love and we just kind of collaborated each step of the way and they've been so great like patient kind you name it uh, I've never worked in this way with an illustrator so that was a new experience for me and I'm just honored Angel accepted you know uh, the request that I had and that you know I think how we found each other you know how I just believe things happen um, you know, when it comes to the divine connections, I really do believe that. And I have been searching, mm -hmm. searching for certain illustrators and I, a certain work that they did. I just liked what it looked like. And, um, they were all busy. Some didn't respond. <laughs> so I happened mm -hmm. to have an angel. That's the story on YouTube. I was looking around and I probably did search for illustrators, children's books, something, and up popped her whole video about her first book uh we are inspiring and i was blown away at her her artwork and um then i got bold and just, just reached out i just reached out to her and she responded and she we just it, we went from there it was just it's been an amazing time and um she's a very special person and and now we're forever connected in this way. So oh, that is so yeah. nice. <laughs> yes. And she's right there, what, California. So yeah. <laughs> oh, she's in California. What, yes, what, right there what with part? you. <laughs> what city are you in? Oh, I'm currently in Davis, Davis, California. Oh, oh you're mm -hmm. up north. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I live in Cerritos. Oh, okay. So you're in SoCal? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining us. And oh, I'm I'm glad I had the opportunity to uh, see this. It's really nice. Absolutely. Um, you all can, you know, find us if you if you're looking for more information. We're on Instagram, and uh, that's I think the popular spot. I think at the moment, Facebook may be another one. I'm not okay. quite there yet. <laughs> okay. I yet. just got on Instagram and I'm not familiar with it. Okay. <laughs> just got on there about a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. But my grandkids know all of that. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> they can help you out. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Oh, uh, well, DeAndre and Anisia, thanks for your support. And um, we really appreciate uh, y'all's interest in showing up and your your time with us. So thanks. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you for putting this together. <laughs> thank both of you. <laughs> yes. Okay. See you later. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.